Today the theme is a, an evangelism method, and I call it God loves you very much and wants to bless you greatly. And uh, you can see a QR code here, and if you have a cell phone, you can scan the QR code and you can download the uh, PDF uh, into your cell phone, and then you can use it for evangelism. So this is a method that I use for evangelism that I, um, I uh, one time, you know, I, I was doing evangelism and then I thought if I just download some photos that maybe that can help people to understand Jesus and his salvation better. So I downloaded some photos and then I had this idea I can uh, prepare some PDFs uh, from PowerPoint ahead of time and then download it to my cell phone and then I can use it for uh, for evangelism so I did that and uh, uh, this is one of the products I have a number of uh, of these PDFs for evangelism and for building up spiritual life okay now this theme here is God loves you very much and wants to bless you greatly so this is the theme so we can talk to people and say you know God loves you very much and he wants to bless you greatly now when we um, use this PDF you don't have to use the whole thing it would depends on uh, depend on um, uh, the situation how much you want to use you don't have to use the whole PDF okay um, Okay, now first we can talk about that everyone needs love, but it's hard to find real love, and many people feel unloved. And uh, and God the Creator is full of love. You know, everyone wants to find love. They, you know, that's why many people are eager to get married. They want to find a a girlfriend, a boyfriend, because they want to be loved. And they thought that you know when they have this uh, marriage, then next uh, then. For sure, there will be love. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, that's not always true. Uh, that some people they get married and then they find a lot of trouble because if they are not ready to love, then there is not much love in a marriage. And uh, but when we <clears throat> find God, He's always full of love, <clears throat> and we can also experience His love when we have a close relationship with him and then he can bless our whole life if we have a, a good relationship with God and then do you want to be loved uh, and people's love don't last for a long time but God's love lasts forever and so how can we see his love God's creation and actions show his love now look at the photos here that you can see the uh, the brain is you know wonderfully designed and it shows God's love to to create our, our brain that ha has so many functions and also you know you see the mother uh, uh, kissing the baby that's you know God put the love in mothers and fathers and also in the in the parents of animals on the right hand side you can see a duck uh, with ducklings uh, uh, carry on the back of the duck and that's how they take care of the babies and down below you can see a monkey that's hugging uh, her baby and then on the right hand side you can see three different animals that they they really friends they like each other and then on the left side you can see beautiful scenery and that shows God's love okay and then some 33 5 it says the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord uh, that we can see uh, the goodness of the Lord and uh, that you know from the the food created that we can see the food you know that we taste are delicious and they are good for our health so that's something wonderful and uh, human and animals have love uh, for each other and for the babies shows that God is full of love and also you know I'll praise you God for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are your works that we can see that uh, each part of our body is wonderfully created our brain 
our eye, our ear, and, and uh, all the hormones in the body. And God is very real, you know, compared to people. Actually, God is more real uh, because he, he's, uh, he lives forever. He has, he has everlasting life, and He can give everlasting life to us. And His love can be experienced. And down below, uh, there, uh, the uh, first two pictures were an uh, African woman. I prayed for her, and then she experienced great love, and she cried, and she said, wow. She experienced uh, heaven, and then she uh, was filled with joy. And then the woman on the right-hand side, she had a lot of uh, pain, and then God released her pain, and so she, she was set free. And then also God can give us better sleep. You know, that's wonderful that God, uh, it's, it's, He can heal our soul and give us comfort. Now the second point about we can see God's love and His real is that scientists find, found that our souls continue to exist after death and there are proofs of heaven and hell. Okay, so the first proof is that there is God creating uh, uh, people and animals and the universe. And then the second point here is that uh, that there are proofs that when people die, they don't disappear. When people die, the souls continue to exist after death. And there are proofs of heaven and hell. And uh, now I will talk about that more uh, after this slide. You do you, you care about your house on earth? Do you care about your eternal home? You know, because uh, your home on earth here, you everyone cares about if your home is leaking water or is burned down, it's uh, uh, destroyed, you'll be very upset. And so we care about home on earth here. But do you care about your home forever? That there is a home forever and it's either, either heaven or hell. Now in 1 Kings 17, 20, uh, verse 21 to 22, Elijah he, uh, he was received into the home of a wi widow. And then, uh, you know, that the, the widow was very uh, kind to her, him. But then the child died. And then Elijah went to uh, lie over that, uh, the child three times. He stretched himself over the child three times and then cried to God that, O oh Lord, I pray let this child's soul come back to him. That means when the soul leaves the body, then the person is dead. But if the soul comes back, then the person lives again. And then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came back to him, and he revived. So this child had life again when the soul came back. Now modern science on the right-hand side bottom, modern method of Resuscitation helps many people's soul return to the body. So many people, they, you know, they died, and then uh, the modern medicine, uh, in, you know, in many hospitals, they have resuscitation, actually in every hospital. And then uh, in many hospitals, there are people who die uh, you know, every day or every few days, and then they re resuscitate the, uh, the dead person, and then hundreds of thousand people died and were resuscitated by medical method. And they could describe what happened after they died. This proves that people have souls that exist after death. So they, you know, they died and then uh, they came back after resuscitation. And the doctor thought that you know, they would not remember anything. They would just say they went blank. But not, that's not true. They came back and then told what happened. Who entered the room, who tried to resuscitate him, and then, uh, and then what they said, uh, how they talked, you know, what they said uh, when they talked to each other. And then uh, some of them described how they left the house and then saw the top of the house and saw, uh, one person said he saw a, a red shoe on top of the house and other things they saw on top of the house. And these doctors were very amazed so they did a wide-scale study. They 
interview many many people who died and were resuscitated and ask them if they saw anything after they died and they have a similar story that they said that you know that the soul lived uh, lift the body and then was flying over the body and saw what happened there and then later the soul left the house and they all described similar things and those things they described were true that they were real that that really happened so that shows that that the soul did not stop to exist but the soul actually con continued to exist after death after the person's uh, breathing stop, his heart stop, and his brain stop, and then they could still see. So that means that they they uh, that means that they have uh, that they continue to exist. You know that after death, uh, the soul stay on. And then some people went to heaven, uh, and there are different stories of people went to heaven, and they have proofs. Now, what kind of proof? Because they went to heaven and they saw something that they did not know. For instance, this child on the right hand side, he died and then he saw his sister. And the sister came up to him and said, you know, I'm your sister. And then the boy was surprised, you know, my sister is living now. But then she said, I'm the sister who died in the womb of our mother. So she died and then, uh, so the boy never saw this sister so he came back and then he said to his mother oh I saw my sister the mother said yes you you saw your sister every day here but then she he said no not this sister I saw a sister in heaven and and then she said that she was the child that died in your womb so that shows that uh, that this boy really went to heaven because he saw something that he really he um, he did not know before and also I know someone uh, this woman uh, she she's a, a preacher she pray a lot and she spent hours every day three hours sometimes four hours waiting on the Lord and then after one year the Lord took her to heaven and now every time she prays she went to heaven and when she went to heaven, she told us three stories. Uh, and I have these videos in Chinese. There are three stories about what, uh, what she saw in heaven, and there are proofs. The first one is a man uh, who died. And then this man in heaven saw this uh, um, woman minister. She's, uh, her name is Wong. Okay? So he saw Wong and then told her uh, to, tell, to tell his wife, uh, he said, please tell my wife to pray more and serve God more because it counts in heaven. It's very important that you pray more and then you, you serve God more. And the second thing is, he said, your mother really likes you. Your mother has told us, me and my wife, a lot about you. That she says she's very proud of you. Uh, she's you know happy because of you and this a uh, ministress Wong she was surprised because her mother never told her that so when she came back on earth she asked them the, the wife of that man and she said that um, uh, she, she uh, said to her that you know your husband I saw your husband in heaven and then he said that he uh, told me to tell you be sure to pray more and serve God more because it does count in heaven that you know our, our, our good works are recorded and rewarded in heaven and then uh, your husband said to me that my mother has told you and him a lot of times about me that she really likes me is uh, that she's proud of me is that true and then the wife said that's true you must have seen him because you can describe that that you must have seen him uh, that's that's very true and then there's another man who died uh, now these stories are real so uh, if someone asks you to verify this they are in Chinese video and uh, you know I can uh, if someone asks me uh, I can describe this to uh, to the person about this uh, a person going to heaven and the second 
case is like this that a man was dying in a hospital and the family asked Wong to go to the hospital and the, when she arrived at the hospital the man has already died but when Wong went there she saw this man's soul has left the body and was there with two angels on his two sides and then he said to Wong he said tell my family don't cry for me I'm very very happy and the second thing he said say to my daughter I'm very proud of her marriage I'm very happy about her marriage so she told the family she said I saw his soul and then he said to me uh, uh, don't cry for him because he's very very happy now and also he want me to tell uh, the daughter that he's very proud of your marriage he likes your marriage and then the daughter said you must have seen him because that's something he has told me and he doesn't tell people outside of the family so you must have seen him and then also the next time when Wong prayed and she went to heaven and saw this man in heaven and then uh, the man there was eating fruits you know in heaven there's a, a tree of fr uh, life and then there are fruits we can eat and he was eating fruit and he was very happy and he said even if you give me 1,000 years to live on earth I will not stay there I will come to heaven I will not want to stay on earth for 1,000 years and then so Wong came back and then told the daughter she said your father said that even if she can, he can live for 1,000 years he doesn't want to uh, uh, stay on earth he wants to go to heaven and the, and the daughter said wow that is the way he talks he talks like that all the time he said you know if you give me 1,000 years on earth I will not stay on earth you know I can go to heaven I rather uh, do that so that shows that Wong really saw him in heaven so that there was really a heaven and uh, Christians went to heaven and also at a time he went to heaven and saw Jesus and Jesus told her that your ancestor ancestor has killed many people and she was surprised she came back and asked her mother and then uh, uh, the mother said your great-grandfather was a betrayer of China at that time and then uh, at that time the Japanese attacked China and then uh, your great-grandfather was a betrayer and then the Japanese gave him gave him a gun and he went out at night sometimes he you know he stole things from people he killed people we don't know what he did uh, but he must have killed people and so uh, the, the uh, Wong said wow this is true my uh, that Jesus told me about this and then the mother said wow you can even know about your ancestor from Jesus so now all these three testimonies were videotaped and and she came back you know and talked with the three families and told me about it so I went there to videotape that that shows that that when we die when Christians die Christians who follow God will really go to heaven so this is very important story that we can tell people and there are many stories about that too on on YouTube you can search you know went to heaven saw Jesus you can see different people uh, sharing about their experience in heaven and then also the non-Christians went to hell but sometime once in a while there were Christians who were brought to hell by Jesus to show them the reality of hell like on the left side you can see 23 minutes in hell and and uh, this is a real story and uh, and the person is called Bill Weiss w-i-e-s-e -E. and he was a Christian but Jesus let him go to hell to experience hell and then he came back and he preached to many dif different people and share about the experience and there are non-Christians who died and went to hell and then they remember about uh, Jesus uh, when they were young when they went to Sunday school and then they uh, uh, they cry out to Jesus and then Jesus took them back okay so that proves that people have souls and our soul continue to exist after our death and then Christians who follow Jesus will go to heaven and 
non-Christians and so-called Christians who don't follow Jesus, who don't have a living relationship with Jesus, they will go to hell. You know, because the Bible says, if you don't abide in me, Jesus said, if you don't abide in me, and then I won't be abide in you, and you're like a branch that's thrown outside and is withers and is thrown into the fire. So that talks about someone who doesn't have a living relationship with God. And also Jesus said, those who did not do the good things to my brother, one of my brothers, then you'll be thrown into the fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. That is in Matthew 25, that there were uh, there are two uh, parables, the second and third parables there. And the second parable is about uh, that Jesus comes back and then those people who do not use the gifts will be cast into the outer darkness. That is also hell. Okay, three, the Bible has proofs related to science. You know, many people didn't know that. There are scientific proofs about the Bible. Albert Einstein, he's a great scientist, and he said this. You can see that the more I study science, the more I believe in God. So he, he saw the creation of God from nature. Now, in Job 26, 7, that it talks about God stretches out the north over empty space. He hangs the earth on nothing. Now, in ancient literature or ancient uh, uh, any kind of religious literature, it, they always talk about the earth being flat. But the, earth, uh, the Bible is the only uh, biblical, uh, only religious literature that talk about that um, God lays the heaven, uh, excuse me, God lays the earth on nothing. It's hanging on nothing in outer space. That's what, you know, that's our earth is hanging on nothing in, in a space, in outer space. And so it shows that this is God because only in the uh, recent th a few hundred years that human beings know that our earth is, you know, is uh, uh, circulating around the sun in outer space. And also Isaiah 40 verse 22 says that uh, it is he who sits above the circle of the earth. So the earth is like a circle that is not flat, it's not square. And also Job 38, 35 that God said to Job, can you send out lightnings that they may go and say to you, here we are. So, can, you know, in, in old days, they don't have electricity. And there is lightning. And lightning basically is electricity, but it's very, very powerful. So God says to Job, can you send out lightning? That means send out electricity and tell people we are here. You know, in those days, that is impossible. But now we have the cell phones. Very often we send out messages and the cell phone use electricity. And we tell people, I've come to your place. I've come to your street. Where are you? So that's something we, we say very often. And God already knew that ahead of time, that the cell phone can use electricity to send out messages and tell people we are here. And also, fourth, there are many accurate prophecies in the Bible to show that the Bible is God's Word. So, so you know, believing in God is not just believing. It's it's actually there are many proofs that that God is real. In Psalm 22, 14 to verse uh, 14 to 18, here it describes crucifixion. That this is a Psalm of David. David described this as if it is his own experience. But David was never crucified. But the son of David, the descendant of David, Jesus Christ, was crucified. And this described the crucifixion very clearly. So this uh, prophecy is about David. He experienced the experience of Jesus on the cross. So he described that as if it is his own experience. And it described it exactly. And at that time, of uh, that was uh, 1,000 years before uh, Jesus' time, there was no crucifixion. It was about 400 years later, that there was crucifixion uh, by, uh, started by the Persians, that the Persians used the method of crucifixion, and later the Romans, and Jesus was crucified. So 
how did David know that one day Jesus will be crucified? Now here is the description of crucifixion. I am poured out like water, that his blood is poured out like water, and all my bones are out, out of joint, because when a person is hanging on the cross, then you know all the joints have a lot of pressure, and so a lot of tension, so that it, the feeling is like the joints are out of joint. And the heart is like wax, it is, it is melted within me, that the heart is so becoming weaker and weaker. So that's when the blood is drained. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt, that the, the, there's no, no more strength because uh, he's dried up, I, his blood has been dried up, and my tongue clings to my jaws. So he, his mouth was so dry that his heart is hard for him to move his tongue. And then you have brought me to the dust of death. Now this never happened to David, that he was never put to death by people. He, would, he died naturally. For dogs have surrounded me, the congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. So the wicked people have surrounded him. They pierced my hands and my feet. Now, this is a clear description of the crucifixion. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count my bones. Now this is a, 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 a psalm, a, a way of the psalms to describe, uh, to describe what happens, that, that uh, they, he can count his bones. The meaning is like when we have pain, like if you have headache, you, you, you feel your head. And then if you have neck ache, you feel your neck. If you have back ache, you feel your back. If you have ache on the, on the foot, you feel your foot. Now if your whole body is aching, it's like you can feel all the bones. So that way it's like I count my bones, they're all aching. They look and stare at me. The people are staring at me. They divided my garments. They divide my garments among them and for my clothing they cast lots. Now, so this is very, a very clear, very clear description. Because for most people when they are executed in the whole world, they still wear clothes. But here, for crucifixion, people are stripped naked. So when Jesus was crucified, there was no clothing on him. It was the artist who draw you know, a piece of cloth around him, uh, his loin. That was because you know, they don't to make that look too bad. But Jesus really took the worst shame when he was stripped naked and he was crucified on the cross. So this described the crucifixion of piercing of the hand and also the clothing was divided among the people. And this happened among the Romans that they would divide up the clothing of the people. So this shows that, that God really knows the future and he gave the thoughts to David and David wrote this down. And David could not have thought of this himself. It must be inspired by God. Now, there are Two other places that talk about, actually three other places that talk about that the Messiah will be killed. One place is Isaiah 53, that talk about his servant will be put to death. And then in uh, Daniel chapter 9, the anointed one will come, that is the Christ, will come and will be killed. And then also in Zechariah, it talks about you would cry over me that you have pierced. Jesus was pierced on the hand and feet and also on the side. So these three, these uh, four passages all together have prophesied that the Messiah will be killed. So this Psalm 22 and Isaiah 53 and then also um, uh, Daniel chapter 9 verses 24 to 26 and then also uh, Zechariah uh, that, that they would cry over God that they have pierced. Now, how can God be pierced? It was Jesus who came on earth and then they pierced Him. And then here Daniel prophesied the time of Christ's coming and also after His coming that Jerusalem would be destroyed. In Daniel chapter 9 verse 25, know and understand this, from the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, the ruler, comes. There will be seven sevens and sixty-two sevens. That means seven times seven and sixty-two times seven. That means 
six plus six, uh, seven plus six is two. That's sixty-nine times seven. Sixty-nine times seven. That's four hundred eighty-three. Uh, and that's 483 years that from the time the decree to rebuild the Jerusalem uh, and, and then it will be rebuilt and a trench uh, and a trench but in times of trouble that at that time the Jews did not uh, have the nation yet they did not have a nation and it's only in 1948 that they have the nation again and 26 after the 62 sevens the anointed one will be put to death. So this is another passage prophesying the, uh, the killing of Christ, the Messiah. Old Testament, Old Testament in Hebrew is called Messiah. In New Testament is called uh, the Christ. And we'll have nothing, so he'll be killed. And the people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. So there will be people who come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. So this clearly prophesied the time of Jesus' uh, first coming uh, after the decree to rebuild Jerusalem. It will be 69 nine times 7. That is 483 years, 483 years. And then the Christ will come and then he will be killed. And after that, that uh, the people uh, of the king, of the ruler, that is the Romans, they will come and destroy the city, Jerusalem, and the sanctuary. And then the end will come like a flood and war will continue until the end. So there will be war and now we hear about the wars in the Middle East all the time. So this clearly prophesied Jesus coming. Uh, uh, when he comes and after he comes then uh, Jerusalem will be destroyed. And this was destroyed in the year uh, 70 AD. That's uh, 40 years after Jesus' death. Okay, so that shows that God is real. And one day we'll die and our soul will live forever. 